we are so glad that you are here, whether you have joined us right here in the room where I can see your face, hear your voice, I love that, or if you're online, I already saw some of the comments on there, we're so glad you're joining us online. Uh, I love that we have online just so as people are traveling, they can still stay connected with us, and uh, God can use technology in extraordinary ways, right? And so we get to continue to allow the gospel to move further and farther, so uh, we love that so much. Well, today we are so glad you're here because we are launching a brand new series through the month of June and it is called Timeless, Timeless. And if you see, uh, we are talking about hidden figures in the Old Testament. So we're pulling out stories, we're pulling out people uh, that maybe you've never heard of before, maybe some of them you have. Uh, Today we're kind of in the middle of the road where we may have heard about this particular story or maybe you have not or maybe you've heard the names but you didn't really understand. Uh, the the integral part of the details. And I'm going to give you a disclaimer about today's story. You guys ready? It is the real deal. It is eye-opening. It is scandalous. It is, you're going to read this and be like, oh, wow. Okay, we're here, Daniel. Great. Awesome. Uh, But uh, what I want you to do is turn your Bibles. I'm going to give you a sneak peek, and then we're going to be there in just a second. Turn your Bibles to Hosea chapter 1. Hosea chapter 1. We're going to be in Hosea chapter 3. Today, we're going to be talking about the story of Hosea and Gomer. Hosea and Gomer. If you've ever heard of these two names, if you're looking for baby names. Gomer. There you go. Just write that down. It's appealing. Uh, Hosea and Gomer. And I just want to pray for us. Ask God to speak during this time. Uh, I believe that God can teach us some things. And uh, honestly, today this story is, is, is eye-opening, but it is a reminder of who God is here in this particular situation. So let's pray. Ask God to speak to our hearts here this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise you. We honor you. God, we are so incredibly thankful that we get to be here today, that we get to open up your word together. God, I pray that as we walked in today, maybe we're carrying burdens, carrying stress, anxiety, worry, uh, whatever we may be carrying, God, I pray that over the next few moments we can lay those at your feet. God, I pray that you will speak to our situation directly. I pray that I will decrease so that you may increase. I pray that you breathe life. I pray that you breathe hope. I pray that you breathe direction here into our lives into our hearts. So we ask all this in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said... Amen. Well, today's story, Hosea and Gomer, it really reminds us of two pictures. And there's an age old, ever since humans have ever been here on this planet, there are two pictures. There's one picture of who God is, right? And his idea of the world, his idea of humanity. And then there is a picture of humanity, right? There's a picture of what people are like, right? And we look at these two, and I feel like the Bible, especially God, is constantly showing us these two pictures. He shows us who God is, right? And then he, and then we turn the, the camera pans a little bit and we look at the second picture of who, who humanity is, right? We see that at, right at the beginning of the Garden of Eve, right? As soon as people were created, God speaks and everything comes into existence. God has all of these things, right? And then the camera pans over to Adam and Eve and they last, what, a, a few days maybe uh, before we see sin and brokenness and hurt and all of these things enter to the world and then the camera pans back to a picture of God and we have these incredible pictures that you and I can constantly look at one and then we're looking at the other and then we're looking at the one then we're looking at the other and God wants to do something I think today in this story where we get a reminder of who God is and then it's going to cause us to reevaluate and look at humanity's picture look at the picture of my own self and go how can I get closer to this picture that God God has created, what God has said. And and so we're constantly looking at those two things. And to really help us understand what this means, we have two characters here in the Bible, Hosea and Gomer. And to understand this story, in the Old Testament, God has his people that he called out, called the Israelites. And the Israelites were what God calls his chosen people. It was people who he has decided, I'm going to show the world my relationship with people through 
these Israelite people. And so he would uh, appoint these prophets. And at one point he appointed judges. Then he appointed kings. All of these different leaders, right, uh, to rule over and to direct the, these people groups. And so uh, here in this particular time, we're talking about 700, uh, 700 B.C. during this time. So all my history buffs, you're like, okay, yeah, got it, right? But the rest of us were like, okay, B.C., good to know, right? Uh, but we, we see this picture of Hosea, and he is a prophet of God. And if we know this, a prophet of God is almost the middleman. He is the one who is communicating to God's people. And in the Old Testament, right, the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would descend on a person for a moment in time. And they, they, didn't ha- they don't have the same promise that you and I have where the Holy Spirit dwells in each and every believer because of Jesus Christ. And so the Holy Spirit would kind of descend on a person, speak through a person, do something in that particular situation or time, and then the Holy Spirit would move on and, and be a part of that. And so the Holy Spirit and God would speak through particular people. And oftentimes, here's the crazy part, oftentimes God would use prophets and he would tell them not only to say this, but I want you to live this out. And some of them are very bold. Some of them are very radical for our society, for our day and time. We look at it and we're like, okay, wow, this this is kind of, can we be honest, kind of crazy, God, that you would tell someone to do this, to make a point, to remind people this is the picture of God, right? And he would use the Old Testament prophets. And we have uh, in the Old Testament, you guys ready for this? I'm, I'm teaching a little bit. Is that okay? That's awesome. We have major prophets and minor prophets. Not because one is more important than the other, but the major prophets, the books are longer. They're, they're more expansive. And the minor prophets are the shorter ones that we read in the Bible. And so Hosea is considered a minor prophet because the book's a little shorter. The message is a little shorter in this moment in time. And so it's a part of the minor prophets here in this collection of stories. And to to really grasp this context, we have the Israelite people who are separated into two different territories. And so Hosea is going back into the Israelite nation because, in fact, the Israelites are actually in a season of prosperity. They're in a season where they're doing really good if you look from the outside looking in. They they have money. They have won many wars. uh, And and because of this, uh, you and I know sometimes when we are blessed beyond measure, right? When we get really, really blessed, sometimes it can be easy to start to think that all of this is because of me, right? Is all of this is because of my own power if we're not careful. Not saying that happens every time, but the Israelites started to do this. They were like, wow, look at us. We are powerful. We have won all these wars. We, we know what is best. We, they started accumulating all this money. And so because they had all this money, they started turning to other nations, even if they were not like God or what God told them them to do. Uh, They were to stop basically relying on God and going, all of these nations, all of these people, they are basically the reason why we are doing so well. And so God starts to notice this. And we see the picture of humanity. And this is not just now. But if we look at our world today, right? Uh, And if you read all the way from Genesis to the book of Revelation, these two pictures kind of just, just kind of ping pong back and forth, right? God steps in, humanity messes it up, right? God steps sin, humanity messes it up. And you just see this kind of ping pong back and forth. And so Hosea is coming here in the story. And God is going, my people are no longer dependent on me. And in fact, if you go back, we're not going to read it today, but if you go back and read Hosea chapter 2, God's not messing around. He starts doing this, talking this prophecy. And in fact, he's not only calling out uh, people, his Israelites, he's calling out priests, he's calling out religious leaders, all of these things. And he, so he's very forward in this. And so we get to Hosea chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 2. We're going to read verses 2 and 3 and then jump over to Hosea chapter 3 and really talk about the kind of the base message of what God called Hosea to do. You guys ready? Buckled in? Excited? Not really sure? That's okay. Here we go. Hosea chapter 1 verse 2. It says, When the Lord first began speaking to Israel through Hosea, He said to him, Go and marry a prostitute, so that some of her children will be conceived in prostitution. This will illustrate... How Israel has acted like a prostitute by turning against the Lord and worshiping other gods. So Hosea married Gomer, the daughter of the Blam, and she became pregnant and gave Hosea a son. 
we read that story, you and I lean in, and can we be honest? This is a little radical, right? You're like, uh, you and I, we look at that. God told Hosea to go and marry a woman in promiscuity, right? Marry a prostitute. Marry someone who has chosen the profession to turn against God on a regular basis, right? And he says, Hosea, I want you to go marry this person, marry this woman. Now, if you and I, if we're honest, we we like to keep God in a box sometimes, right? Well, this story shatters that box a little bit, right? It shatters the box of God's just going to tell me to do something comfortable. He's going to keep me nice and neat, non-messy, right? Like it's going to be smooth sailing. But we we see this right here, right off the bat, that God is teaching us something. That God, he does this to make a point. That you and I, that a lot of times for spiritual growth, God calls us to be uncomfortable. When we, when a rubber band is being used, what happens? It is stretched, right? It's almost stretched beyond its capacity because it is being used. And you and I, if you want to know what the enemy of growth is, it is comfort. It's when we get comfortable and sometimes even spiritually speaking, God may be calling us to take a step of faith. And the problem with a step of faith is it's a step of faith, right? Like I am unsure. I'm not exactly, I don't have all of the understanding. God, I'm placing my faith in you. I'm placing my trust in you and you are going to grow me. You're going to stretch me here in this moment because if I'm Hosea, right? If I'm Hosea, I'm like, uh, excuse me, God, I, I didn't, I don't think I heard you right. This, this, something must be off. Like I, I need to go pray a little more. Maybe I need to fast a little bit, but let me go get my wise counsel together. Like this can't be God, right? To call him to do this, but God did. And I think it's for you and I to look in that we see that God wants to do something here. And in fact, God's willing to be maybe more radical, more out of the box than you and I have thought, right? He's still the same God, but a God who we serve that is willing to step into the messy, willing to step into the hard, willing to step into the edges of society for people to understand the picture of who God is, right? And we can, we can sense that here in our day and time. And so as we get that, we see that Hosea, this is, this is where the story gets really good. So I want you to lean in a little bit. Everybody still okay? Everybody still good? You're like, wow, Daniel, this is great. Whatever. But as we read Hosea, we see this, that where Hosea is obedient to God. He may not fully understand why. He may not fully get the whole picture, but he steps forward and he goes and he marries Gomer. But here's what happens. We see that Gomer... Now, it enters into this marriage, but now we see that Gomer, in the middle of this marriage, leaves Hosea. Even though she is married, now the Bible says they have three kids. And in fact, God is so bold, he gives him the, the kids these names that don't mean some great things. Like, like, like God has left them. And all of these, these things that, that God calls Hosea to do here by example. But yet, he, they have, they're in this marriage. They have three kids together. And then Hosea wakes up one morning and Gomer is gone. She's no longer in the house. And she has left Hosea. And Gomer has gone back and fallen back into her business. She has fallen back into prostitution. And you know what God tells Hosea to do? He says, I want you to go. And I want you to buy your wife back. And here we see this in Hosea chapter 3. And it starts here in verse 1. It says, then the Lord said to me, this is the moment. He's already stepping out. He's already taken all of this radical obedient faith, right? Like, why God, look at me. I'm stepping out in faith. And then his wife leaves him, right? And then he goes, the Lord said to me, go and love your wife again. Even though she commits adultery with another lover, this will illustrate that the Lord still loves Israel. Even though the people have turned to other gods and love to worship them. So I brought her back. So I bought her back for 15 pieces of silver and five bushels of barley and a measure of wine. Then I said to her, you must live in my house for many days and stop your prostitution. During this time, you will not have sexual relations with anyone, not even with me. This shows Israel. 
Israel will go a long time without a king or prince and without sacrifices, sacred pillars, priests, and even idols. But afterwards, the people will return and devote themselves to the Lord their God and to David's descendant, their king. In the last days, they will tremble in awe of the Lord and his goodness. I just feel like we need to step into this story here a few moments. Can you imagine being Hosea? Your wife is gone. She has gone back and now you get the word that she has gone back into that business. And so Hosea, God goes to Hosea or God goes to, blah, blah, sorry. Hosea goes to God. Hosea comes to God. And he says, what do you want me to do? I want you to go back and buy your wife back again. Can you imagine being Hosea going, oh, oh, I don't even know where she's at. Who, who, who owns her now? What, what brothel is she in? What street corner is she in? And now Hosea has to go and hit the streets, right? Hey, have you, have you, seen, have you seen Gomer? Have you seen Gomer anywhere? I'm looking for Gomer. Oh, man, I, I, didn't, realize, I didn't realize she was back out here. I don't, I, I don't really know where she is. And Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And he goes down to the next street corner, goes down to the next house, knocks on the door. Hey, is Gomer here? Is Gomer here? Can you imagine who opens the door, who answers the door, the person who owns her outright here in this situation and going, oh, you're looking for Gomer? Yeah, actually, yes, yeah, she's in the back. And Gomer goes, or Hosea stops and he says, I'm here actually to buy her back. Hosea, imagine being the mindset that is his wife, right? The covenant that they have together. And Hosea goes forward and pursues her to buy and purchase her back what is already his, right? Like he's already said, you are mine, I am yours, and yet you have left, right? And you have betrayed me in this. And Hosea makes the bold move and says, here, I am. But here's the thing about Hosea and Gomer. Even though it's in the Old Testament, spiritually speaking, I am Gomer. Spiritually speaking, you are Gomer, right? Like there was a moment where God created humanity. And he says, I long for relationship with those who I have created. And yet there was a moment in our life, for many moments in our life, where we said, you know what, God? I think I can do this on my own. I think actually I know what's best. I, God, I, I think I have this under control. And this is actually really fun. And this is really great in the moment, right? Like, and we pursue to sin or when we turn from God and God calls Hosea to do something radical and he says what I want you to do I want you to go and buy her back to illustrate that I still love my people and I'm willing to go to the ends of the earth to let them know I still love them and I'm calling them back into relationship with me what an amazing beautiful picture of who God is right and if you're taking notes I would love for us to get this timeless truth and someone call all my bullet points we have three timeless truths from the story and then three action points when our response because of these timeless truths and the first one I love for you to take notes take a picture of the screen is God is love so he shapes my idea of love God is he is the author of love it's his essence it's who he is he can't act outside of his nature to love and so sometimes society you me we can try to put this label on love but God is saying I am love uh Jacob hold on just a minute yeah not yet not yet you'll be up here for like 20 more minutes that's okay that's okay I'll, I'll call you in just a second I like it though Don't cut me off too short yet. Here we go. Uh, So God is love. And this is the big picture, right? God has called us into that. You remember John 3, 16? For God so loved, right, the world. And then Romans chapter 5. This is so impactful. Because you may be sitting here, I may be sitting here questioning, going, wait a second, I'm Gomer? Like, I am Gomer, spiritually speaking. And this is what it says here in Romans chapter 5, verse 6 through 8. It says, when we were utterly helpless... Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great 
love for us by sending, right? By Look at the, diff, the correlation between Hosea and Gomer and God here in Romans. He's saying, by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. But God showed his great love for us. That's a beautiful picture of Hosea. Hosea stepped out. He did not wait. He pursued Gomer. Gomer was sitting in her sin, in her brokenness. And Hosea showed up as an illustration. The Bible calls this a foreshadow of who is to come. And his name is Jesus. And when he saw us in our sin, and not even in the moment, right, of us going, God, I need you right here in this moment. No, we're still sitting in our sin and brokenness. And Jesus says, I'm going to come and I'm going to show you how much I love you and I'm going to send my son to die on the cross even while you and I were still sinners right he's saying God so this is a picture of love God first pursued us is his love for us that begins to shape our picture of what love actually looks like and if you look here in the, the second one here timeless truth God remains faithful even when we are not our faithfulness your faithfulness my faithfulness does not weary or deter God's faithfulness he is faithful from beginning to the end he is the alpha and omega right he is the the author and perfecter of our our faith and who moves are you and who moves is me right we go back and forth and our faithfulness may waver but you and I can rest in the fact that God continues to be faithful he continues to say this is who I am and you can trust me you can walk with me and at any moment you can come back to me At any moment, you can trust me and trust my ways. And any time you and I may falter or waver or fall, we can always go back to God and his faithfulness. Because his love is an endless supply. His love that we see this picture. But we have to be careful here because Jason gave a beautiful message last week, right? And we talked about because grace abounds, the free unmerited favor of God. Because grace abounds, does that mean we can just go on sinning? Let me just live however I want to live. No, right? Because there's still earthly consequences. There's still consequences that we may have because of the lifestyle we've called to. But yet we can still enter back into the relationship with God, right? We can still be wiped clean. We can still be holy. And God is still holy. And so if you're taking notes, the third one here. And I got to be honest, this one's my favorite. You ready? God is holy, but patient. God is holy, He is perfect. He is sinless. And he will not compromise on his holiness. He cannot move into sin. He cannot do all of those things. He is holy. But we see here in Hosea, he reminds us that he is patient, right? In our unholiness. And when you and I accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are, we are righteous, right? We are made holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. And now a holy God lives and dwells in us. But now there's a tension in us, right? My brokenness, I still live in a broken world. I have this tension of of wanting to lean towards sin but God is still trying to pull me back into the holiness and even though he is holy he is patient with us amen like he is patient and he is guiding us and he is directing us he's still calling us to righteousness he's still calling us to holiness he's still calling us to the lifestyle he has called us to but yet he is patient with you and I he is willing to walk with us in our brokenness, walk with us in our unfaithfulness, walk with us in our hurting. And he's saying, I love you so much. I'm going to walk. I'm going to be patient with you in this. But I'm, I'm going I'm to hold you accountable when you step outside of it, right? I'm going I'm to speak into your life. I'm not just going to let you roam. I love you too much because sin is not why I created you. Sin leads to death. It leads to destruction, right? In the moment, it may feel fun. In the moment, it may feel like this is what I should do. But yet we see in the long run, we see almost, sometimes even immediately that it leads us to a path that we were not created for. And God is going, if you want to experience The abundant life found in Christ is trusting me as I'm shaping you and molding you into this holy image of God. And he is patient with us. And here's the thing. We are called to be patient with others too, right? In this process. 
Because we know I'm trying to follow this holy God and he is patient with me. So I really need to be patient with those who I'm walking with as well. Those who I'm in relational circle as well. Even though it may falter. All of those things I can come back in and just like Hosea is reflecting the patience and the, uh, the faithfulness and the love of God. You and I can reflect that same patience, that same love, that same hope that God has given us. And we see that God is still holy, but yet he still brings patience. And so if we, if we look at this picture for you and I, we, okay, we have these three timeless truths of who God is. This radical picture of grace, right? But what is our response? What are we to do with this? We have the two pictures, right? What are we to do with this picture of God? And now how do we move that picture of God into the picture of humanity? What does this cause me to do? And so I'd love to give us three responses out of this. Everybody still okay? Very good. So the first one for you and I, when I read this story of Hosea and Gomer, one of the first things I believe the Holy Spirit leads me and guides me to do is check my own heart. Here in this moment, I read the story of the Israelites. I read the story of Gomer. And for me, it's like, okay, where am I compromising? Where am I maybe leaning into something that is not of God, right? Because I, I know that if I let this go, if I just continue down this path, it's going to lead me further down destruction. It's going to lead me further away from God. It's going to lead me further to uh, whatever it may be, this burden that I start to carry. And God is saying who the sun sets free is free indeed. So am I headed towards burden or am I headed towards freedom? God is saying, I want you to head towards freedom. But first and foremost, when I read stories like this and I look at other people's life, I, the first thing that God tells the Israelites to do, he says, you need to check your heart. Your heart is far from me. You have drifted from me. And so for me, we read this even in Psalms where we say, God, is there anything in me that you want to continue to change? Is there anything in me that I'm holding on to that I need to release to you, God? And it causes me to look inward first and allow God to shape us from the inside out. And then because of this, because the enemy, when we feel that tension, the enemy is going to go, look, you're broken. Look, you... Can you imagine being Gomer and your husband shows up to buy you back and you just turned your back on him and he shows up and goes, hey, I'm here to buy you back. I still love you. Even though you turned your back on me, I'm here. Can you imagine? I I don't even know. She probably couldn't even look him in the eyes. Just the, the shame, right? The guilt. I can't believe. I'm sure there's a tension. Am I angry? Am I broken? Like, I don't know. Can I even go back to him here in this moment? And she goes back, right? And we experience this because the enemy will keep us way down in shame and guilt. And I, I don't deserve this. You're right. You don't. Neither do I. That's the goodness of the grace of God that we can come to him. And you and I, now we can remember his forgiveness. Out of our response, we need to check our heart and then we need to remember his forgiveness. And in Romans 8.1, it says, For there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. He has taken our sin and cast it as far as the east is from the west. I am forgiven, right? And I am pursuing what God has called me in it. And we cannot allow the enemy to weigh us down but I am forgiven in Christ. And maybe you don't have a relationship with Jesus here in this moment. And if we don't remember that forgiveness, we don't remember that faithfulness, you can have that forgiveness today. You can walk in that forgiveness. You can move towards freedom in Christ today. You can experience that. And then the last part here is you and I, just like Hosea was called to, we can reflect his forgiveness. And I would even say even broader, we can reflect the character of God, right? Our response is, I, can't, I have to remember the forgiveness, this radical forgiveness, and then I reflect this forgiveness in Christ, this holy moment that I have. And now I can step out into a broken and hurting world, and I can remember I am forgiven. God can do the same for you. I'm a reflection of what Christ has done in me and through me. 
I have stories after stories, right? We can walk into people's lives and go, hey, he can set you free too. He can remove that burden from you too. And he can help you in those moments. We are called to reflect it just how Hosea has reflected too. And so, uh, Jacob, you can come on up now. Look at this. Perfect, man. And I just want to end with this. Because this is really, honestly, the heartbeat, I think, of this story, Hosea and Gomer. I think this is the heartbeat of what God wants you and I to know through this story of Hosea and Gomer. And there is this one sentence here in verse 8 in Hosea, and it says this, But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ Jesus to die for us. Why we were still sinners? That's in Romans. And this is what he says in Hosea as these are mirrored together. This will illustrate that the Lord still loves Israel. And I don't know where you're at today, where you're at this morning. But maybe you need to hear that truth. God still loves you. No matter where you are, no matter what you have done. God still loves you right where you are, right with the thoughts that you're having right now, right with the thoughts you had last week, with the actions that you did last week, the actions maybe you did last night. Right now, in this moment, God loves you. And what are you saying? I want you to come back to me. He's still holy, but he is patient for you. But the whole time he's calling us saying, hey, I want you to come back to me. Come turn from the sin. That's not that's not for you. Freedom is for you. And I love you so much that I sent my son Jesus to die on the cross to set you free. So that now, free indeed, you go into the broken world and you begin, we we become Hoseas to the world. We walk out into the broken world and saying, God still loves you. He is calling you away from that unrighteousness and towards his holiness. He is calling you from that burden, from that bondage to freedom in Christ. He is calling you from the dark moment in the valleys of your life and he is saying I will pull you back up if you will trust me but God still loves Israel how amazing to know his faithfulness even in my unfaithfulness he is still faithful I can always turn back and cling to him oh sorry she can get me excited and James tells us if I draw near to God he will draw near to me So my prayer from this story of Jose and Gomer, maybe it was kind of a shock of, ooh, that's who God is? That's how faithful he is? That's how big his love is? That's how much he loves? He'll pursue me even in that? Yes, he will. He'll pursue our world, our society, even in that? Yes, he will. He is still holy, but he is patient. And we have a moment this morning I, just to release that to God. Say, God, let me check my own heart. Let me remember your forgiveness or maybe let me receive your forgiveness. And now I'm going out into the world. I'm reflecting the peace and freedom and hope in Christ. God, I'm releasing this control to you. I'm releasing even this comfort to you, God. It is your truth that is dwelling in me. And so I just want to pray for us today. And maybe you've never given your life to Christ. And I want to pray with you here first in this moment. If you've never given your life to Christ, you may be hearing for the first time where you're at in those seasons that God still loves you and he's calling you into relationship with him. And I want to pray with you. And so uh, let's, with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you'd want to repeat this prayer after me, this there's no uh, magic or there, there are these words. It's a condition of our heart crying out to God. And it, the Bible says if we believe that Christ Jesus died on the cross for us, believe that he rose again, that we can live forever with him. And so if you want to pray this prayer with me to start a relationship with God, you pray this something like this. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I have been running from you. God, I know that I have sin in my life and I surrender my life to you. God, I ask that you would save me. I ask that you would start changing me today. 
God, help me to live in your freedom. If you prayed that prayer here today, I encourage you to grab one of those connect cards, fill it out real quick, check, I've decided to follow Jesus. We want to continue to pray with you. Or grab me right after church, one of our leaders. We'd love to talk with you. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to give you a hug, celebrate with you as we are walking in this thing together. And so let's pray together just as a church. So Heavenly Father, God, we come to you today. Honestly, as we read at the end of chapter 3, God, we come and we tremble in awe of your goodness. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for uh, finding us in our hurt and our sinful state and pulling us out, God. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for changing us, God. Help us to experience this radical grace to where your love, God, we can't just put you in one box that we think, God, that you are so much bigger. Your love runs deeper and you take our sin and you cast it as far as the east is from the west. I pray that we remember that you are in control, God. We are not. I pray that we remember that it is your faithfulness that we boast in, not our own. God, I pray that we remember that your love, it never fails. God, I pray that we as a church, we would turn with everything that we have to you. And I pray that if something is weighing us down, that we're clinging to God right here in this moment. I pray the Holy Spirit just begins to speak what it is. Right now in this moment, we release that to you, God, in Jesus' name. You are now in control of that situation, that moment, that thing in our life. God, we trust you with it. You work all things out for the good of those who love you, God, and we trust that promise. We ask all of this in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Let's stand and worship together.